Hey, welcome to the sports segment here on the show. I'm Benedict Osu with my colleague Seren Saki. And uh, it's a preview Friday, so of course uh, we'll build up to what's going to happen this weekend in the major European leagues. The English Premier League is really getting interesting. So it's really, really getting interesting in the Liverpool, Manchester City. all will be hoping to get uh, wins in their respective games uh, this weekend. And then the top, uh, top four is as well. There's, there's a latest there uh, in terms of uh, one managerial casualty, uh, which is uh, Fulham. I've said Claudio Ranieri. Ranieri. All right. So 17 games he played at the club. He only won uh, three. We'll tell you about that. We'll do the analysis and also uh, take you to Spain as well as Italy, Germany, and then the French League on. But here on the local scene, Kumasia Sante Kotoko will be in action on Sunday at the Baba Yara Sports Stadium. It is said uh, to their third uh, group game in the ongoing CAF Confederation Cup. The first game they played uh, was uh, at the uh, Baba Yara Sports Stadium, which uh, they lost. Uh, they won by two goals one and then went away and lost and then their last game was away they lost to Incana by three goals to one well they have an opportunity uh, to revenge uh, that uh, defeat and also build up points in their quest to make the next stage of the competition their uh, CEO George Amako is hopeful uh, of a win on Sunday that is it's exactly what we're going to be working at and I can assure you it's not going to be easy it's not going to be easy at all but trust me we will do our best to win those two games. And I'm saying that at this stage of the competition, uh, we are playing against men, not boys. And we are playing against very good and matured teams. Uh, if, you watch, if you watch the game from the stands, you see that, yes, you are playing a match of your life. We need to improve. We need to work harder. See, finally, the support here has been massive. I mean, you look at people on social media and those that watch the game and the uh, optimism they express behind this team has been commendable and laudable. I'm very much impressed about what I read on the social media. People seem to understand where we are coming from and where we are going. And that is very, very encouraging for us. I believe that Sunday and the following Sunday we will achieve something. All right, so Kumasi Asantekotoko, CEO George Amako there. Let's go uh, over to the phone lines and speak to Safo Duku, who is communications director of the club. Mr. Duku, thanks so much for your time this morning here on the show. Are we ready for the game on Sunday? Yes, of course, yes. After that uh, unacceptable defeat to Nkana, mm. uh, cannot disappoint our fans playing at our favorite uh, Babayara Stadium. How difficult is this game? Of course, I mean... Uh, looking at the dynamics, if we are, if you don't get a few maximum points, it will be definitely difficult to get through to the next stage of the competition. Well, it's, it's very, very tight. Of course, as the team I just said, you watch how Nkana play. Mm -hmm. My brother, forget about Scottover playing at home. Uh, if we don't put our house in order, they can cause havoc. So it's going to be an uh, extremely difficult game for us. Mm -hmm. uh, don't forget that uh, should they also win, it will put them in a better position to qualify. So they are not coming here to do. But I believe that um, this is a match that we have done, make amends and bring back joy to our supporters. That is the feeling, uh, that is the mood in camp, and that is what our boys believe that uh, will be. our supporters to continue uh, patronizing our matches is to win this crucial match for Sunday. To yeah. us, it's a make or break. Okay. Because it seems that the teams are winning in their own matches. So we can't afford to even drop a point. Otherwise, that would be the end of the journey to, to me. So it's a matter that we, we are not taking it uh, lightly at all. All right, Mr. Duku, uh, the last game we missed Sananu uh, due to injury. Are all the players fit? And is he okay? Well, um, the medical team will, will, will brief us on Sananu today. So let's wait and hear from them. Mm. But in terms of what we are doing to get the fans into the stadium, what has been done so far? So far, we've been engaging the supporters uh, by visiting various major business centers around the metropolis, especially. Uh, we will continue to do that uh, tomorrow. And then even on Sunday, there will be a float uh, through the principal streets of Kumasi just to create awareness. We know that the fans will come in any way, but there should be something extraordinary. What well, is a match uh, of our lives, as the CEO said. 
and everything, everybody to be on board so mm. that together we can, we, can, we, we can account for the stubborn in Ghana. Okay, so finally, before I take leave of you, I understand you're signing a contract with a German energy drink uh, tomorrow. How true is that? Well, uh, please let's focus on the match and all other things will be discussed later. For now, our attention is on the match. Well, but this is a sponsorship deal and of course it's part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, My well. brother, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, uh, we, we, are, we are very serious about this particular match. Okay. And uh, we have decided to put all other things behind us. Mm. Okay. And then after, after the massive win, then we'll talk about that. All right. Okay. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Uh, Duku. So that's uh, Kumasi Asatoko, uh, communications director Samuel Safo Duku uh, speaking to us. Well, he doesn't want to talk about the, uh, <laughs> the energy drink uh, sponsorship they are signing tomorrow. But uh, I mean, you look at how they played away to in Ghana. Very good display from the team, but just some few individual errors that caused them. How do you see uh, that you know, going into the game in Kumasi on Sunday? Well, Kotoko, at the moment, if you look at the attack and football of their side, it's very good. But then what they have to fix is their defensive play. It seems like some of their players are a bit complacent. Mm. Um, they have a very good goalkeeper in Felix Anand who's been protecting them, yeah. but their defense has been a bit shaky. That's where their opponents have been plotting some gaps in there. What they have to do at the moment is that Nkana has six points. Al Hilal and Zesco both have four points. Kotoko has three points. If Al Hilal and Zesco draw and Kotoko should be in Ghana, they have the chance of moving up. It's always point. about the calculations. And, and uh, that's, <laughs> that's where Ghanaian teams always put us to do their calculations. So if they are, the other counterparts draw and then they beat um, in Ghana, it would be a good one for Kotoko. But at the moment, three points down there, they are in trouble. Mm. So just to give you an idea of what Seren is talking about, the group uh, in which Kumasi Asante Kotoko find themselves in, they are languishing bottom of that group. So. Four teams in a group, they have three points uh, with uh, Inkana uh, leading uh, the pack with six points, having won two out of three games. And then Zesco, Hilal, so Zesco are second with four points and Hilal also with four points. Uh, Hilal won one, uh, they've drawn one, same as uh, Zesco. Uh, so Kumasi Asante Kotoko must win that game and also get uh, six points. And then we'll see how that will go, we'll do the cal calculations and see if they can make at the next stage of the competition. But of course, away from uh, that, uh, we have to uh, focus on what's going to happen this weekend uh, in the English Premier League. Uh, top games coming up and Selwyn will take us through uh, what's been happening, uh, what, what we expect. Oh, but first, before we do that, we have to check what's been happening uh, with uh, Fulham. Well, they've sacked their manager, Rian Neri, after just 17 games. Well, he won just three out of those 17 games. A report put together by my colleague, Asai Bidiago. Have sacked manager Claudio Ranieri after just 106 days in charge with first team coach Scott Parker taking temporary charge. The Italians' last game was Wednesday's 2 0 defeat by Southampton, which left the Cottages 19th in the Premier League, 10 points from safety with 10 games left. Ranieri took over in November after the sacking of Slavisa Djokanovic. The 67 year old won only three of his 17 games as manager. It included a 3-0 victory over Southampton in his first game, but 11 defeats have followed, including an FA Cup third-round exit at home to League Two side Oldham. Ranieri led Leicester City to a miraculous Premier League title triumph in 2016, but was sacked just nine months later and then had a season in charge of French League R side Nantes. He took over on a multi-year contract at Fulham when they were bottom of the table with five points, from their opening 12 games, but failed to oversee an upturn in fortunes. All right, so that was a Saribidi Akos report on uh, Claudio Ranieri's sack as a Fulham manager. What do you think uh, led to uh, this decision? Well, it has to do with uh, Fulham not being able to win games. Um, as um, their CEO, Tony Khan, was expecting him to do, he came in to save the job. He came from Leicester with so much clout on him. But then Fulham at the moment, they had problems with their defences, mm. which even um, their old close, um, Slavisa Jokanovic, couldn't even solve. Yeah. They brought in um, Ranieri to come and solve their problems because he is known as someone who is very pragmatic and bring in a lot of defensive. But they signed so many players. A lot of investment went into the club. They were trying to save themselves. And being in the relegation moment, Tony Khan said that he spoke to um, 
Claudio Ranieri on Thursday, mm. he agreed with him that everything has to be done. And as a gentleman that Claudio Ranieri is, he amicably went out of the club. And then Scotty Parker, who's the first team coach to be taken over, he started his career as an um, under-18s coach for Spurs. Yeah. You all know that he played for Chelsea, he played for Spurs. But he actually he played, played for... under Ranieri. He, he was the last player he signed at Chelsea. Exactly. So he's, he's someone that is coming in to take over the job. But at can the you moment. do it? Well, if you look at the trend that's going with managers, a lot of old players are now coming in. Maybe he would have a modern system. The players would rather relate to him more. So hopefully, as you've seen, the likes of Pep Guardiola laying down that pace, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer coming yeah. in as an old player. Maybe Scotty Parker could be another one that will be coming in for Fulham. All right, so we'll see if uh, that will be the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer story at Fulham. But Fulham definitely will be in action this weekend. That will be the first assignment for Parker uh, since taking charge uh, from Claudio Ranieri, who was sacked yesterday. So, Selwyn will take us through uh, what to expect this weekend in the Premier League. Certainly, I will be starting the weekend with the North London derby and Tottenham will be playing against Arsenal and then Bournemouth will be playing against Manchester City. Manchester United versus Southampton, Wolves versus Cardiff, Burnley versus Coastal Palace, Brighton, Huddersfield, West Ham versus Newcastle. Then on Sunday, Watford versus Leicester City, Fulham versus Chelsea and Fulham that will be Scotty Parker will be playing against his former side Chelsea and then the Messi side Derby will be Everton versus Liverpool. Mm, of course, some great games to look forward to uh, this weekend in the English Premier League. But the Spanish La Liga as well will have the Clasico, so Definitely will have the Clasico and also we will be starting today. It will be Rayo Vallecano versus Girona, Espanyol versus Valladolid, Villarreal versus Alaves, Huesca Sevilla, Real Madrid versus Barcelona, Aiba versus Celta Vigo, Real Betis Getafe, Real Sociedad, Atletico Madrid, Valencia, Atletico Bilbao, then Leganes and Levante on Monday. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so I, I think it will be interesting to, before we do the Serie A, it will be interesting to look at the Classico with uh, Barca taking uh, the win in the Copa de Rey. Yeah. That's in midweek. Right. Pressure will be on them definitely. to win this one. Def and I fancy Real Madrid to nick this. Well, Real Madrid will definitely will be wounded lions at the moment. They'll be trying to get themselves back. Yeah, the exciting players that are coming in that they could have won the game, but then you could tell that Barcelona used their counter-attacking style to beat them at the Bernabeu. They will have that vision in players like Vinicius who will be trying mm. to make a mark in this game because he's a very exciting player. But I think Barcelona have an edge over Real Madrid and I see them taking in this one. So Barca, you think, will win For this me, game. Barcelona will win this one. All right, okay, but briefly, uh, let, let's go through what we expect uh, in the Serie A before uh, we call it a show. Yeah, we'll start the Serie A tonight and we'll be Cagliari versus Inter Milan, Empoli versus Parma, AC Milan versus Sassuolo, Lazio will be playing against Roma in that Rome derby, Torino versus Chievo Verona, Genoa versus Francinoni, Spa will be playing against Sampdoria, Udinese, Bologna, Atlanta, Fiorentina and Napoli will be going head to head with Juventus. Of course, great games to look forward to this weekend in the major European leagues. Thanks so much to my colleagues Sarin Saki and Benedict Hosu. Thanks for watching, join us at 2 on Sports Today, a major sports bulletin on this platform. The AM Show continues after this short break. Don't go away.